can't. <laughs> Welcome little children and come and play in our garden of magic mm -hmm. for a Saturday Night Movies podcast featuring the three Sanderson sisters, Winifred, <laughs> Sarah, <laughs> There you go, Winifred, <laughs> Sarah. Wanna hump? <laughs> <laughs> what are you, jiggling titties? <laughs> I'm throwing my hair back. <laughs> oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> well, we're here talking about Hocus Pocus, and it was my pick, and I'm so excited. It is a glorious morning, another glorious morning. Makes me sick. So... I'm excited. I love this movie for so many reasons. Um, I went into it with an eight. Uh, I kept it at a six. I have, haven't seen this movie in a while. When and did you first see this movie? I don't even remember. Probably with you. Oh, Because okay. I don't think I watched this when Ever. I was a kid. Yeah. Up or anything like that. And then Katie, what about you? Like a nine. Because this is literally... A must-watch movie around Halloween. Oh, like must. Yes. <laughs> like it would be. It would honestly be probably my number one go-to if I was gonna choose. Like, what kids Halloween type movie would you watch? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. I agree one hundred percent. Sisters, are we ready to show our numbers? In three, two, one. Show your number. What? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Oh, oh, I got angry. Just so people know, I only dropped it down to an eight. Lisa. I stayed at an eight. And I dropped it down to a five. And my personal number is 12. But we're here to review. We're here to criticize. So it stayed at an eight, sisters. And I had a lot of problems with this movie. We're Why? just going to call you Ernie. <laughs> Or whatever his name was. <laughs> oh, and then ratings. So I looked up the ratings. Lisa's always looking up the ratings. Internet Movie Database, 6.9 out of 10. Unfortunately, Rotten Tomatoes gave it a 34%. I think we need to burn them at the stake. Pretty and <laughs> Google is at a 92%. I mean, how can people not like this movie? Like Bette Midler, the, I put a spell on you. That's my favorite. Mm. And now you're mine. <laughs> like I was dancing in the bed while we're watching it. I was singing the song. I'm like, I love this movie. Well, see, my favorite song is 100. percent The the um, come little children. That's all my pros. Come and play. What you're saying? That's all my pros. Good for you because she's sexy <laughs> when she's like all groping the stick. <gasps> it's a little. But when you really she's think saying about like, it, she's come out and play like. Yeah, like I'm thinking like if she drove a car, it would be a van with free candy written on the side. Right? <laughs> well, that was part of my problem with the movie because I found like there were a lot of things that I don't know if they're plot holes. I just didn't have an answer for. When she was singing, right, that song was causing all these kids to kind of become hypnotized and stuff and come to their house to then, you know, be killed. Eaten. Why weren't the main kids affected? Because when you look at the crowd of kids walking, there are clearly teenagers in that crowd as well. So why weren't they affected by the song? One of my questions. The little girl. I not actually her. never thought about that before. One why weren't they affected? Magic? Because <laughs> they, well, is it because they knew of the sisters already so they didn't fall for or is it because maybe he's the one who lit the black flame candle, so he's the one who summoned the witches? So we had a heavy debate on this. <laughs> God. Um, Don't look at my list. Oh, I know. I'm bringing up the because I remember you were telling me about like why is it that no one heard the cat talk? Like the cat never talked to anybody no, else. That can I clearly explain my thing. Go ahead. One of my other issues was if the cat was saying that he was there for however many hundred years protecting people. Three hundred. Lighting. Hundred years. Why didn't he say anything before the cat the candle was lit? 
And if because you go with the claim that it was the candle being lit that actually allowed him to talk, that you know uh, started the powers that the witches had for him to be able to talk, he was still a cat. Like that, how is it that that magical part of the curse was there, but yet when the candles lit, now he could talk? Why couldn't he G talk from the from the start? I think it's because of the black flame candle, because he was cursed to be a cat until someone lit the black black flame candle and brought the witches back. So it kind of makes me think that maybe he knew that his main goal was to get the witches back, defeat them. Boom, I get to go die for real and be with my sister again. So maybe there was some selfishness he there. He attacked the kid when the kid was going to uh, to light the candle. So if that's the case that he wanted the candle lit, why protect it to begin with? Okay, so, okay, so with that then, maybe it was something like he didn't want the candle lit, but he couldn't talk until... <laughs> You look like you had a stroke. Well, that's what that's what she did. What was her name? She's like, what was her name? Like the sister, you know, like Winifred, Winifred, Sarah. Oh, wow. oh my God, what was her name? It's like it, it's 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 oh, it's driving me. Peggy good. Hill. It's not Peggy Hill, but it's Kathy and Jimmy. Because she's always like that. Well, my my question Ooh. is though. I have the answer. answer. I have the answer. I'm just waiting. If, I think because he couldn't talk until the black flame candle was lit because that erupts the magic. That brings the magic to light. But the magic is still at work because he's a cat. He's still a cat. Because he was so cursed a thousand years ago to be a cat. Cursed with what? Cursed with what? With the with magic what? before the witches oh, died, though. So then it's there's not magic gonna... that's happening before the, the flame is lit that starts some new magic. That's what I don't get. If, I just if think the magic it exists, why is it existing before the candle? You know, why is it that he's a cat before the candle, but then after the candle, there's some new magic that lets him talk? Why, well, because why I think he that's the before? point. I think it's because the black flame candle, he was cursed by the witches just to be a simple plain cat. So he wouldn't be able to talk to people and be like, don't, don't. Light the candle, you're gonna bring him back. He can just only jump and act like a cat. But the moment the candle's lit, all of a sudden he's able to speak and he's like, You dumbasses. You because lit the remember, candle. Remember, he was trying to speak to his father and he kept saying, Meow, 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 after the witches technically died. When they were hung and he saw their little things. Oh, I didn't switch over my little earrings. So we'll do that while we're talking. Um, we. We see Binks trying to speak to humans, and all we kept hearing was him meowing. Now, in his world, he could have been talking, right? But humans could not understand him until that that magic, like, think about it. His, okay, so what Katie was saying is he was cursed to be a black cat for the rest of his life. Black cats, still to this day, are considered cursed animals. They are the least likely to even be adopted even still in 2020. I uh, want to adopt just sad. the black cats. I understand. <laughs> so and them. they they <laughs> did not want like so they they couldn't understand him. Now we have two we have two curses happening at the same time. One we had to wait until now they didn't know it was going to be 300 years but it happened to be 300 years. They had to wait until a virgin lit the black flame candle which gave them the ability to talk now if we look at it the only people that could hear him talk and understand him were the three individuals in the room that lit the black flame candle you had max you had yabos and you had i can't think of her name at the moment and you had um danny they were the only ones present mm -hmm. and that is a big trope within like these kind of like magical like movies where it's like it only affects the individuals mm -hmm. i get your point if he's still a magic cat one the cat doesn't perform magic two he like it just no is, he's affected by the he's magic. affected by the magic of that particular curse I, he the curse never said that he could talk to other people he was just destined to be a cat for the rest of the time I, and he was trying to prevent the wrong people but because it, he wasn't successfully able to 
ward off Max, all of a sudden, now we're entering curse number two, do and you, that old curse is gone. Do you see as a problem the problem, though, in the logic of it? Before they die, he's cursed to be a cat, right? Uh -huh. At any point before they die, did he talk to them as a cat? Did he speak to them before they died as a cat? We never had that opportunity to see it. Okay, so they died and he was a cat. Yeah, I don't. I, he, I can't remember. A, okay, they when when he went in and he stopped. He tried stopping Emily from dying, right? Mm -hmm. And then he's like, Rawr! and then she's like, you know what? We're gonna teach you a lesson. And then um, and she goes, trim the bones and bend the back. Keeping you that, yeah, whatever. Uh -huh. And then <laughs> like make him into a little cat. No, no. When he, okay, right then and there, <laughs> did he ever talk from that point on to when they died? Did he talk to them at no. that point? Okay, so he didn't speak to them. No. So this is my this is my problem that it doesn't make sense that their curse. Okay, it turns them into a cat. I get that, but then why would the lighting of a candle actually be a? It's a benefit to them because they're bring they're coming back to life. But why would it be a detriment also to them because now he's able to talk? Why isn't so? Do, he so do you think he the entire time? So so do you think he should have just been a cat, just a cat, just no talking, no? That's that's my problem. It's either he could talk and he chose not to, or listen, he's the Gandalf of 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 Hocus Pocus. Okay, he's the mentor. He is the mentor. That's just his role. I'm. This is my. This I is understand. Just you can have me. that plot hole. <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> thinking about why it. He it did meow. He did meow at the witches. Okay. What? And he you, like kissed. I think because she was like, "Oh, such a pretty kitty." Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> what if he? What if he wasn't able to learn how to talk like we talk or how he used to until later on? Who knows? I can see your but plot if that's hole. A, if that's the case, you would have been able to talk to the I understand, kids. But I can see your logic in your plot hole. Oh. I just personally think that I see it differently okay. where we have two simultaneous not simultaneous, we have two well yeah, because they are happening at the same time because when he dies, he can come back to life. I really think that the under, like that understanding happened once that black flame candle, or the fact is, what if he could talk the entire time, right? That's what I said. What if, or he, if he knew he chose, how to talk and he didn't. And if that's the case, it doesn't make sense because if he's trying to protect the candle from being lit, the first thing you would do if you know how to talk is yell at the kids, don't light that candle. But we don't know how. We All he ever said was, for 300 years, I was trying to to prevent this candle from being lit. Which makes sense because I think with your your theory, Katie, of like he wanted it lit so that he can die, all this stuff. Then then why wait wait three hundred years? I think he knew that the power was so strong. It's better for me to live my life like this because remember he was living with guilt for letting his that was his guilt for letting Emily die. Mm -hmm. He couldn't save yeah. his sister, so. I think what it is is that this is the one time he wasn't able to thwart off these um, uh, kids in doing this. Because remember, the girlfriend said to Max and Danny that a lot of spooky things would happen there because her mom conveniently was like the director of the museum at one point, right? And I wonder if the, a lot of spooky things happened with there was... What if kids heard voices where it says, don't go in there? You know what I'm saying? Like, at this point, they lit the candle. He had no choice but to talk to them. Mm. What if there's that? God damn it. <laughs> I go to the litter box. No, no, but what I'm saying is, but, but, but okay. what if he, but the thing is, is you got to also understand is like, if there is this right, like roaming cat that's talking, right? Then we would have heard that in their folklore as well. Because we are also living in a town that is basically rooted in paranoia I know. of people, I'm, of witchery. I just ultimately think that either way, there's problems. There's problems if he could talk before and he chose not to. And there's problems if he could only talk after the candle was lit. Because then that's 
that's an aspect of the magic that's actually hurting the sisters and not helping them which you have some validity to another to it. another con that i had that includes the cat is when they were in the cemetery right he was telling them this hollowed ground he knows the witches he knows they could fly why would he think that if they have the book that the witches are after why would he think that they're safe just standing in a cemetery if he knows they could fly and attack the people from not having to stand one foot on the ground they could just attack them from yeah the but air. then if, you know, if maybe he didn't even it. think about that like because well, he, i mean he's technically the mentor he should have known. He should have known, yeah. But the thing is, Winifred did technically touch hollow ground and at the nothing end, that's another, that's another con for me. And I give that. That's why I'm not giving it a perfect 10. So maybe it there was, are plot holes. <laughs> no, may, no, maybe her falling on the ground. Are you talking about the one where she like face plants and then she yeah, goes like yeah. this and gets uh -huh. up? Yeah. I wonder if maybe they were using that as a this is just another superstition. <laughs> I mean, there's there's different like elements. The salt. Would that have hurt them if they oh, threw it did the salt hurt her. at people? It did hurt her. There was a moment when when Yabos threw. I just wish I could Yabos. remember her name. When Yabos, I can't threw, even remember her name either. She actually, she she's like, "Hey, Sarah," and she went and she threw a big old handful of salt in the cemetery and Sarah's face, and she's like, ah! and then she did like this whole like flip around. So it did hurt her. So it wasn't just folklore. The salt was fact in this magic book. I, it's like a weird biplane. Sounds like a seaplane, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Next stop, aliens. <laughs> like, like, honestly. I have another one. Definitely. Well, oh, let God. me bring up one. I, like, honestly, as much prose as I have, I actually do have a solid con, and I never thought about this as many times as I've seen this. Yabos was really not fully necessary. In some ways, she kind of helped the story along, but Yabos could have been like a guy friend that he wanted. Like, Yabos had no direct need in this story to be like a love interest. Or Other whatever. than being the love yeah, interest. Because, yeah, because he could have been dared to go in and break into the Sanderson home. Like, how he could have fallen on the wrong crowd, or she just seemed very ancillary. And I never noticed how pointless yeah like you could take her out and it could just be him and his sister and it would still be the same movie i i think her whole thing was just supposed to be like she was their way legally into the house since it's a disney movie they don't want to be like oh you broke into the museum technically she did um, break in she stole her mom's didn't they keys break in, didn't they break into the school too yeah that was a con on here <laughs> how did they break into the school and how did they trip like because back then there was still like like alarms that would have gone off and then if it was that quiet at night and it was supposed to like 3 a.m and a lot of shit happened within two hours from 3 a.m to like the time the sun went up mm -hmm. 3 a.m when they got thrown into the into the um what is it the the kelm mm -hmm. to be burned right um yeah. like like you would have heard the loudspeakers is like welcome to high school hill i think the you only know, like, the the only thing against that i would say is that all the adults were dancing till they died remember they couldn't stop oh, yeah right. so well no no that's the adults happened to have been there you oh. we have to then imply that every single adult went to that party which not all the adults because we saw people trick-or-treating maybe they and you know left. there's gonna be some karen who's gonna be like i don't believe in halloween and then like she'll stay home and then she'll see all the fucking witches and she'll be like I knew it. <laughs> she turns into Carrie's mom, like yeah, going dirty to the closet. <laughs> yeah. I can see your dirty pillows. <laughs> I've always wondered how many years did they really take from Max's life? Because Winifred did sniff out a lot of his soul. What I just thought of, you brought up something good. Like when they drank that the potion, they'd have that like shimmery thing around them, and sh and they would be like sucking it in. Have you guys watched the movie Doctor Sleep yet? No. Well, I won't give away like any of the like specifics, but there's a part where like they suck out the person's soul, and they it's, it turns into like this weird steam that comes out of their mouth, and it totally just made me think of that movie, and I'm like. I wonder if Stephen King took that from Hocus Pocus. 
That potion would have spilled at the cemetery when it fell. Yeah, that too. That's another like, one of my cons. Like when if the way it fell, yeah. the liquid would have come out of it. Unless it's magical liquid. <laughs> that bottle in the potion in the cemetery never hit the ground. They caught it. No, but it was open. It wasn't no, corked. She, no, she had a cork. They corked that sucker. No, because she took it. Didn't she take it off to feed it to the <gasps> oh, girl? Yeah. And oh, then it fell. Oh, and it as it's like falling, oh, that thing would have yeah, just it right out. out. And those it's somebody, magic. You know what? That is magic. Or somebody's like some like super smart person that's smarter than us is going to find our um our be physics in the, exactly in the comments that like, bringing up newton's third law when it gets the velocity of this falling but i do want to go back to the hollow ground do you think the reason why winifred was the only one that that turned to stone before she went into purple dust was because she was the only witch technically touching hollowed ground and she turned because was there isn't there some kind of folklore that witches turned to stone up? I was looking up some trivia. Same animatronic cat that was used as Binks is the same cat in Sabrina. Oh. The exact same animate like the robot or whatever. Um, so basically, Binks and Salem, same fucking cat, and magic. And then also, um, I remember watching this episode too. It was a really good episode of um, Where Do I Come From on TLC, where they do the, like, the genealogy. Sarah Jessica Parker is, is actually like, related to one of the witches like hung at no, Salem. No, hung. She was not. She actually did escape. So it was her 10th uh, great-grandmother, because I thought the same thing too. Her name was Esther Elwell. And she was arrested in Salem for a sundry acts of witchcraft. But she escaped, and she never made it to trial. So she actually ran away, and she she actually lived. Hence why, because if she was hung, she wouldn't have come from the line, Sarah Jessica Parker. Unless they had a kid after. No, she escaped. So I was like... I mean, that's pretty cool. So I, I mean, remember I, that episode. It was a good episode, I like, honestly. I, I mean, I like the look of the witches. I like Peggy Hill's. When I noticed it, that her hair was like a traditional witch hat. Yeah. It's like, that's pretty cool. Um, I like the fact that the kids, they actually, each one of them brought like a different plan to how they should go about. It wasn't just one person taking over. Hey, we're going here. We're going. Here. They really gelled as a, as a team, which was nice. Uh, Doug Jones, who played Billy Butcherson, that was his name. Mm -hmm. He's. Oh, his little tantrum. Yeah, he's he's big in in a lot of movies. Like he's known for doing like the full makeup. Like he was uh, he was the fawn and the pale man in Pan's Labyrinth. He played. Both oh, movies. he was like the guy that was like. Yeah, mm -hmm. he was Abe Sapien in Hellboy. Uh, he's done. Like, I also a lot have of stuff. another trivia on him. You know the ma the moths that come out when he ripped open the makeup. Oh God, was it really? Those are real moths. He really had real moths that came out of it. It was not CGI. I just loved his tantrum. He's like, oh, I Go wanted ahead. to say that for so many years. <laughs> That's one of my what one of my cons. And maybe you guys can What that he called her a Halian witch from hell or something no, like that. My, my, my problem was <laughs> that if he knew what he wanted, if he, all this time he knew what he wanted to say to her, why was he even bothering chasing the kids? magic because they were probably controlling him <laughs> what if all this time he could have been trying to also impress sarah right because he was having an affair with her yeah that's why winifred killed him in fact when right before his head got knocked off he was trying to tell max like hold up hold up he's like mm, don't do this don't do this you know like what if he was trying to warn them the whole time and he wasn't even meaning them harm but since they were he was brought back by magic they automatically assumed oh shit he's after us let's run yeah. hurry up billy butcherson before he rose up i think it was either before was or right after so okay billy was winifred's true love right she loved billy but then when she found out that he was fooling around with sarah she killed Billy, sewn it like yeah, so, fit of rage. Yep, did fit of rage and sewn his lips shut because 
where he knew all of Winifred's secrets, which we know because they were killing children. So on what magic? No. He no, lured the children. Okay. Could you imagine? We don't know. We don't. We don't know all how right. exactly so, all this. So the stitches weren't sewn with magic, but he never stopped to, to undo the stuff himself until that very moment. If he, if he really had no intention of hurting the kids, if he really felt the way well, that yeah, he, he did, he could have taken a he, stick and cut he it cut at it any it time. And yes, them. I understand. So it wasn't, <laughs> but, but it, was it wasn't no. It wasn't the magic that was on. keeping him. I think because the thing is, if he would have done it at any time. It would have ruined one of the best parts of the movie is when he does that. You have the moths coming out and he tells Winifred off, calling her all those things and saying, yeah, I love that. Bitch. How is it that she didn't know what a bus was, right? No one knew what the bus was when it pulled up. But when she's flying and the kid is driving, she says, let me see your driver's permit. I know. <laughs> My, okay. I watched it with my mom and my mom actually brought that up. She was like, how do they even know what <laughs> any of this slang is? Cause she's like, throughout the movie, she said that was one of her biggest cons was you'd hear old timey speak like, thou hast turned us in. <laughs> like, I loved it though, it was so fun. Well, I mean like, I, I love that, but then it would switch over to modern day speak. And I'm like, yeah. it would have been cool if there were a lot more thou hast speak and then like maybe like one time Danny's like what are you trying to say just say yeah, it in English would have, it would have been. like they didn't know what a tis a road it's like oh when they pushed her into the into the street a road a road a road yeah right like <laughs> tis firm I mean there's so many different elements to it this is my yabo <laughs> oh little fat boy he has a bunch of big kitty titties <laughs> He does. Oh, baby. And he refuses to look at me. That is not how you treat your fellow gingers. He's not a ginger. He's a tan. He's like, you don't have treats. <laughs> Just like, fuck you. <laughs> how is this different from the Jaws issue? Because I hated Jaws back in the day. No, but saying <laughs> when you gave me huff for giving it an A, and it's like, yo, you're not really reviewing that fairly. And it's an because eight. You're, With the because problems that it had and you have an eight. Because your problems are a personal problem. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I was defending Petey <laughs> for Crawl even though it's a shitty film. Yabos. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, the sto but, my, but my problem is it's not. The storyline still holds up. Like, yes, are there plot holes? Sure. But the story is a good story. I personally don't think Jaws is that good of a story. I don't like it. No, I'm, not to I'm not talking about you with how you rated Jaws. I'm talking about the stuff you gave me for rating Jaws, what I did, when here it seems like you're doing the same thing example. with Hocus Pocus. Give me an example. All the plot holes I went through Debate and, you time, still guys. Said, and you still said, oh no, it's still an eight, which that's your score. It is but still an eight because I gave you, you a reason. But, but when they go back and see Jaws and they see the plot holes you brought up and then I give it an eight and you say, well, that's not really supposed to be an eight. Kind of the same thing? No, not really. <laughs> not really. Hocus it kind of is. <laughs> <laughs> but little childhood me would 100% up this score to a perfect 10 out of 10, if not more. Because once again, every Halloween, I would watch this movie before going out and trick-or-treating. And I always kept thinking, one day, I'm going to visit Salem I'm going to see the witch's houses. And because like, you know, when her mom, when she was talking about how her mom was like a historian running this place, I was like, that's what I want to do when I grow up. I want to work in Salem. <laughs> I mean, that's what I did here in New York. I worked with houses just like that. That looked Were just like that. Uh, we didn't have witches, Confirmed but witches. we had, we had not, not witch stories, but I'm just saying the concept of a historic house. Yeah. Like the idea, like a, fa a famous, like famous people lived here and we're keeping up their actual home. See, uh, I find that so interesting. Like I love history like here. that, yeah, but yeah. I wanted to mainly just go like visit yeah. Salem, Massachusetts, like where actual, like the site where they hung them, their yeah. graves, Me too. everything. Do you think so like cool. when you go there, it's like very commercial where you can buy witch shirts? Yeah. I survived Salem. <laughs> yeah. 
I was not drowned or hung or burned Press. at the stake. I survived. What about if it says witch, please? Well, but One fact that. about Salem witch trials. Not one witch was actually burned here in the States. The burning happened over in, like, Europe. Really? Over here, all the witches that were accused and put to death were hung, oh. except for one man. He was pressed to death, and he actually kept telling them, add more stones, add more stones, until he eventually, of course, like, died. Was he a warlock? Was that a male witch? I don't know if they called him a war. I mean, a warlock is a male witch, but I don't know if they like used those terms back thou then. They were just like warlock. <laughs> thou art, art thou? <laughs> Gandalf. Yes. I mean, come on. Also, too, like let's have a laugh at like how they kept calling the devil master, mm -hmm. right? Like, and it was and Laverne he, from Laverne and Shirley. And the irony is they're brother and sister, but they were playing husband and wife. Whoa, what? You didn't, didn't know, know that? that? You didn't no. know that they were brother and sister in real life? His name Gary... Uh, Gary no. Marshall and what's her face? Um, Penny Marshall. Penny Marshall, yeah, they're brother and sister. But they were I playing husband and wife. That. Yes. But like my that whole thing hilarious. is they literally were so stupid that they didn't see, like if they really knew who the devil was, right? So you're going to tell me that Gary Marshall looks like the actual devil? Like there I'm was like, a... Like there was a lot of plot holes, yes. Like childless, childish humor. Like as a child watching that, you're gonna be like, ha ha ha. They think, but I still master. like, I still laughed throughout. To me, if I'm going into a movie knowing that there's magic, right, and we know it's a Disney, so it's gonna be hokey pokey, I'm I'm not gonna question the cat. You know, it's like some things you just kind of go with it because it's so silly. Except when it's Jaws. <laughs> Jaws is supposed to be real life. Honestly, she's <laughs> coming back like this is not fucking real life. I mean, there could be people who be like, excuse me, you offended me. It's like, okay, I'm sorry. Like, like, go, <laughs> you like, do not believe that is our master. <laughs> you know, like master married Medusa. Like, I mean, I did <laughs> like that thing. The snakes in her hair. <laughs> watching the TV and then she clicks the channel the and the baby she's like <laughs> <laughs> it's just funny it's so hilarious funny like like hubba hubba you know toil and trouble like you know and then the whole joke is like we 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 we, uh, we want to go where the children are right and he's like well baby will give me a moment there was um, adult what? humor too that like yes. jokes like that joke when I was a kid I wasn't when thinking but then I was just like, did he just say, <laughs> like, yeah, he like, do like, all like, of them? Yeah, like, basically, there'll be a, like, it'll be a, not a throuple, it is it a quadruple? I don't quartet. know. A quartet? Like, like <laughs> let's, let's pull over all, off of my, my bus depot and, and well, I'll get you some kids. Can we have an honest conversation of how cool it is that these things that they talk about, like, it is literally a black flame, they CGI'd it, and it is made out of the fat of a hangman and then two the book is like skin i want that book like oh my god it's, it's so cute when like, she's like book and it's like his little eye opens up Mama. It's, like looking around, <laughs> right? it's looking around and like i think that's the thing like yes do i have personal bias i will admit but to Jaws is, do you have, to, can you admit that you have personal, because I even asked you, you're like, I don't have a personal bias. Yeah, there is a personal okay. bias, but in rating it, I didn't give it what I would. And I feel it is an eight still. I think it holds up. I think, I think families could watch it. This is not the last that we will have of this Oh, no, we have it. I mean, <laughs> 20 <laughs> years later. I will <laughs> hold this down i think it is a solid film you're walking into a disney cheapy cheapy and in fact it was supposed to come out in 19 in the, in the mid 80s and it was called it was called something halloween town well what something really like that. and disney sat on it for eight years and then they finally decided to make it yes oh. it was like so well you could place or something imagine if this movie was never made I would be very sad because this is very, this is a cult classic, '90s Halloween family comedy. 
like this is a staple to me yeah. and and we all know you all don't we all know my favorite movie is nightmare before christmas coming soon in december i'm picking it but this <laughs> if you can't see me i'm pointing down <laughs> jiggle those yeah. titties you have no soul <laughs> <The miabos. laughs> so would you think about it like this you know how when um christmas is in town that you, it's just like you just have to watch a christmas story like every year just watch oh. it on christmas or christmas eve do you think this is one that you have to watch either on Halloween or on or around Halloween? I think, I think so. it is. People always watch Halloween, um, Friday the 13th, Nightmare Freddy on Cougar. Yeah, yeah, like I Scream. think there, there are definite like staple Ghost Dad. films. <laughs> you Ghost can watch Dad? This is boring as or hell. Bill Cosby. God. I don't remember that. Um, so here's one question I got for both of you. Yes. Which is more 90s cliche, Casper, what we did last week, or Hocus Pocus? Like, what felt more like this is 100% a 90s movie? Because I'm going for Casper. I think so, too. Yeah, I'll give you that, because the, 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 the screenplay had so much 90s into it. Like, with Hocus Pocus, I think more of the 90s is, like, the kids' haircut, ice. Because back then, a lot of people were, were Ice. drawing things <laughs> into their heads. Uh, the sneakers, yeah. the way the kid was dressed. But... New Kids on the Block was uh, was brought up. Mm -hmm. uh, Madonna, the mom dressed as Madonna. She's like, what? Don't you know? I'm... I'm... Uh, um, <laughs> it was more subtle. Or sub... Mm -hmm. Yeah, subtle. 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 Fuck me. God subtle. damn it. Okay. <laughs> What was the thing with the with the with the the backdrops? I don't oh, know. No, no, it's like a tapestry. She was like, Ta oh, yeah, yeah tape tapestry, and we're like, tapestry. <laughs> I, I was saying, I was calling it a tapestry, and she's like, no, it's tapestry. tapestry. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and you're like, oh simple. shit, it is. <laughs> <laughs> but when have I ever spoken proper English? I make up my own words, mm -hmm. um, and my own pronunciations. So Hocus Pocus. It was indeed a 90s movie, but everything about it was very subtle. Did I say it right? <laughs> it's, okay. <laughs> it's okay. Subtle. Sub 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 subtle. Subtle. How do you say it? Damn it. All right, ready? Sut. Sut. Oh. Subtle. 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 The B is silent. Subtle. Oh, well. Fucking like, like, think of it like shuttle, <laughs> shuttle, subtle, subtle. Oh, okay. I've yeah, heard someone pronounce Arkansas as Arkansas. Oh God, that's terrible. <laughs> and they were wait, saying, yeah, I've I've heard I've heard it oh. Arkansas pronounced like that. Are they trying but... to say this is our Kansas? Oh God, how horrible. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa! I don't like that at all. No. <laughs> um, what about the cat? Mm -hmm. The biggest plot hole of it all. Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys want the cat to stay a cat forever? Because when Danny was talking about like, don't worry, I'm always going to be here for you. And then my kids and my grandkids, I was like, oh my God. And then when he like died officially and got to move on, I was like, you son of a bitch. Yeah, <laughs> you were I supposed to be there. there. I always get so sad at that, but he needed to do it so that he can be with his family again. Yeah. I was like, yeah. fuck Emily. You're gonna live forever. You know how I always <laughs> hope that once he gets to his parents, be like, "Yeah, you remember that kid, that cat that you were like kicking, and you're like away with you, beast." That was me trying to say, "Dad, I'm here. Love me." The witches turned me into a cat, <laughs> and then he, <laughs> Dad, tells him like, what if, "You're a witch." What if you're <laughs> on the dark road and just started killing cats to see if she could find one that was immortal? <laughs> oh my. <laughs> See now you're focus too. Now you're saying, <laughs> now you're saying huh? Katie, like to like some sick twisted shit. Did I we mean, need to I call CPS on you another... when you were a kid? Yes. <laughs> yes <laughs> My yes. journals are full of red flags. <laughs> what if, like, you found your journals? Yeah, I read my journals from like I was probably like in fifth or sixth yeah, grade, so bad. I'm probably like ten or eleven. And there's some clear red flags of we should talk to this kid and his parents. Because, like, I, I wish that 
terrorists would come and, and blow up the school. <laughs> and, uh, and I, this is before 9-11 too, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. Just talking about I'm angry all the time. Yeah. Some dark what, stuff. Was it kind of like a high school shooter? Uh, kind of like no, that? No. Red flags? Just, just, you know. <laughs> Were you in still in elementary? Yeah. Well, so then that was before Columbine. Oh. Because Columbine, we were. Before it got popular. Yeah. To shoot up your high school. That was just <laughs> yeah, you were a mess. Woo! Fat, Fat Man, Man Jones. <laughs> he almost knocked over our fan. Fat Man Jones. He's hungry. He's rabbit. Like, he wants to eat the mice that's under the Salem, uh, in the Salem crypts. <laughs> um, so what are your final thoughts? I am fine with not watching this movie again. I know that upsets a lot of people, but that's just can we burn him at the stake and then take his ashes and then no first let's let's drown you then let's hang you then let's no, burn you first thing you're gonna do is cut my toes for the soup because you need dead come man's on toes. come on they're dead <laughs> man's toes dead <laughs> man's toes <laughs> my lucky rat's tail they could regrow their tongues because they kept biting it off and spitting it into the cauldron that's the one thing i never is liked. that magic <laughs> Well, Wait, they were biting off their tongues? And spitting it into Katie, the... Katie, when you watch this, uh, what are you watching? Because, like, no, I remember it. her, like, going like this, and she's, like, spitting something. I just never thought no, she was no, biting no, off her own tongue. Remember when they did the, the first time they did the potion, and they were going through, like, make it a fresh one. And then at the end, they came around the cauldron, and they were like, okay, the final part is um, a bit of thine own tongue. And then they went... Oh. And then it... <laughs> Okay, okay, yeah, maybe I just forgot. Blood hole. Solved by magic. <laughs> wow. That's all this movie is. Plot hole. Well, isn't by that magic. the title? It's just nothing but it's just nothing but hocus pocus. Oh, and also, did you know too that I know this was just a rumor a few years ago because it was floating around saying like uh there's going to be a sequel and it was the girls in the middle of fucking New York. And it said the witch is back. And it was like hocus pocus too. And it came out that, Oh no, it was just a, uh, it was just a rumor, but Bette Midler is mm -hmm. on record saying, make it happen. I'm 100% oh, up for doing it. She wants it. Yeah. They need to. And what they need to do is bring back Danny and the brother and the love interest. Maybe the love interest took over her mother's job after she died, and now she's still stuck in the town. Or maybe that can prove what you were but saying. How when did she they come back? With they, because I thought about this. I everything you're saying, I thought about this. But then I'm like, how do they come back when they literally exploded into dust? Because she because was the only they, one they they switched. Switched. No, she exploded too. She exploded. Yep. I thought she stayed in. No, stone. she stayed in stone, and then she exploded. So I, I wonder if what happened was they were just vanquished and what if someone, because you remember the book, it's still a magical book, I guess, because it was and looking around. Was alive, yeah. so, so what if like in the second movie, Danny moves back to town and maybe her brother died and they can explain how like Winifred did suck some uh, life years off of him. Yeah. So maybe like he died early and then she has her own kids and one of her kids lights the black flame candle. And if the bazookas are- Well, they would have to get another black flame candle because technically it was only supposed to last for one night for 24 um, hours. Well that, well, that kind of sucks. <laughs> they just need, or they can do a prequel. Make it of, like, like, like The Witch, like a comedy. Yeah. Maybe no. there's a blue flame candle for Viagra. Magic. <laughs> Just throw magic at it. <laughs> magic boners. You get a boner. You get a boner. Can we have a discussion? A, a canceled drawing. That's a toe, all right? That, that I understand. Toe. That looks like a nipple and a penis. Yeah, I feel like it's <laughs> circumcised toe. penises. I was like, what is that? Yeah, that, that that's a dead like man's it. toe right there and a bit of tongue. <laughs> that just looks like a penis soup. <laughs> That's how the sequel comes about. Is that is that your brush? It turns into a weird brush? porn. Wait, wait, is this your bristly brush? Uh huh. Your bushy brush? No. <laughs> your broomstick brush? What was it? Because people don't know. They had to wait until Hocus Pocus to come in. I don't remember what I said. 
Bristle brush. brush. Brush stick? No, broomstick. Brush stick. No, brush I'm, stick. I think it's yeah. brush stick. And the hair stood up. Did that your hair stay up for Winifred? Because remember, she was ugly. She called me ugly. And then when they got prettier, she was like, we're kind of pretty now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all we got for you guys today. Smash that subscribe button and ring that little bell so you get notified of all new content. Other than that, see you next week. Keep it creepy. Bye. <laughs> Stay creepy. <laughs> <laughs>